Despicable Me was the first film to kickstart the Illumination Studio. The franchise has had three highly rated and well-received films, with spin-off movies for the Minions, TV shows, and an endless array of Facebook meme fodder for boomers. It has become a global phenomenon, kickstarting a lot of other successful films for the studio at Illumination. After an absence of seven years, the Despicable Me main film franchise is back, with the least entertaining film in the franchise that feels more like a mishmash TikTok reel than a coherent film. Since we last left Gru and Lucy, voiced by Steve Carell and Kristen Wiig, they've had a baby boy who's the splitting image of his father, with the same head, hook nose, and an appetite for trouble. Together with their three adopted daughters, Margot, Edith, and Agnes, voiced by Miranda Cosgrove, Dana Geyer, Madison Sky, Poland, things take a turn for the worst when an evil villain, Maxime Lamal, voiced by Will Ferrell, plans on stealing Gru's baby and turning him into a cockroach. To counter this, the anti-villain league, led by Silas Ramsbottom, voiced by Steve Coogan, uses some of Gru's minions to insert with some serum to create the Mega Minions, five super-powered minions reminiscent of recent superheroes from various companies like DC Comics, Marvel, and 20th Century Fox. This is just one of the many subplots that the film shoehorns in, making the whole affair seem like an Instagram reel scrolling session rather than a coherent film that centers around the family like the three previous installments. This unfortunately is the downfall. The four different subplots don't contribute to the main story in any meaningful way. Instead, it seems intent on parroting recent franchises like Superheroes, there was also Hogwarts, the Spider-Man 2 train scene, Terminator 2 in a grocery store. It's all fair to try and keep the adults amused while the minions carry on with their Looney Tunes-esque antics to keep the little ones happy. Now the team at Illumination do deliver on the visuals in the most effective way. With each movie, they just keep raising the bar for animation, and this film mixing the humans and minions into the real world is the most colourful and energetic animation they've delivered to date. It's such a shame that this film feels like a cash grab rather than an artistic choice to make a sequel to the series. The overwhelming amount of Looney Tunes-like behavior should be a green flag to Warner Brothers to revive their beloved characters if the minions can thrive in this film series and on their own. The decision not to age any of the characters, particularly the three main girls, feels like a missed opportunity to explore how they deal with puberty and a constant slew of villains who want to destroy their family unit. If you are a fan of the Minions or this series in general, you may find something here. Either way, I'm sure we've not seen the last of the Mega Minions or any of these characters. Hopefully, the next entry in the series won't repeat the missteps made here. <laughs>